You guys are familiar with the Voyager. Voyager 1 and 2. Two space probes that were sent to space in 1977. And on each of these spacecrafts, there is a golden record that has all of our information stored on it. Where we are, the way we look, the way we sound like. These two are getting farther and farther each day. And right now, Voyager 1 is about 23 and a half billion kilometers away from us. But Voyager 2 is a little bit slower and it's about 19 and a half billion kilometers away. And as you know, they are moving in two different directions. Just like we said, Voyager 1 is moving faster, so it has gone a longer distance. And on the 14th of February, 1990, it got to about 6 billion kilometers from Earth. And that is when NASA decides to turn the camera off. Why would they do that? To preserve energy, so it could save it for communication with Earth for a long time. There is a famous astronomer by the name of Carl Sagan, and he actually worked on the Voyager space probes. He tells NASA, before you turn off the camera, tell it to look back towards Earth and take a snapshot. And after this photo, you can turn it off. This was the photo taken from Voyager 1, but you should know the sun was eliminated and it was in the right side, so you could see the blue pale dot a lot better. Just like we said, the name of this photo is Pale Blue Dot, and we've made a video on it. After this, Voyager 1 was blinded, so it couldn't see anymore. But we can communicate with it, and it's moving forward. For the 1970s technology, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were out of this world. And they are the longest lasting space probe or anything in space that has lasted this long and they're still going. The technology that was used at the time in 1977, it was the best in the world. And one of the most advanced pieces that goes onto this probe is the cameras. Two extremely advanced cameras were mounted on the Voyager 1 Pro. Even though if you look at it now and you probably think it's a joke of a camera, but back then it was the best of the best. The pictures this thing could take was 800 but 800 pixels. Back then it was insane to have a camera like this in space, but now it's a joke of a camera. And the camera was black and white. So how did it take colored photos? This was a wheel that has five different colors and this would be located on the lens of the camera. So any photo the camera took, they would have to take five different ones. Then these photos are sent to earth and are placed on top of each other and edited and you get the real result. The human eye works the same exact way. Our eye can see red, green and blue and with the mixture of these colors we could see different colors. So how did it send the pictures to earth? When the camera takes the picture it puts it on a surface and with the power of electrons it scans the photo and with radio signals it's sent back to earth. When the distance becomes in billions and billions of kilometers, it gets harder and harder to communicate. Any picture this thing took was about 5 million bits, or you could say half a megabyte. For today's technology, it's not really a large photo, but back then it was a masterpiece. And when your space probe is billions of kilometers away, it's insane to receive a photo like this. When the Voyagers were sent, it had a speed of 115,000 bits per second. And that means it could have sent a photo in about 43 seconds to Earth. But right now, at around 24 billion kilometers away from us, and the speed of communication is about 160 bits per second. So it takes more than 8 hours to send a photo. But just like we said, it's 24 billion kilometers away from us. So this radio signal that has the speed of light has to travel to Earth for 21 hours to get to us. So we went from 43 seconds, that was in 1977, all the way to 29 hours. If it's a valuable photo, 29 hours ain't that bad. 
So why don't they turn on the cameras just to snap a photo? Just like we said, the pale blue dot photo was taken from 6 billion kilometers. In this distance, NASA believed that this camera is useless now because anything it zooms on, it's like a dot. So we have to turn it off to preserve energy. And that is why Carl Sagan suggested just to take one last photo. It's good to know that Voyager 1 and 2 are two of the only space probes that actually left the solar system. And that is why NASA doesn't want to get rid of all the energy they have. And the more we preserve, the better. So where does the energy actually come from? What did they put in the tank? Is it diesel? No, the energy comes from nuclear power. And the power source is called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or simply put, RTG. So that is why the energy is nuclear. It is true that nuclear energy lasts a very long time. Like in an aircraft carrier, the nuclear fuel makes this thing last for about 30 years. But 30 years is an extremely low amount of time for a thing like Voyager because it's been going for 45 years and we need much longer than that. The energy of this probe has been used and only 250 watts are left. And right now it uses about 4 watts a year. Don't get this wrong. The power of the generator doesn't move the space probe. The power is only used for communication. The spacecraft is moving in a vacuum and it's got a speed from different planets of the solar system. This is what they call a slingshot effect. Or let's say it was shot from a gun and there is nothing in a way to slow it down. And that is why it moves at a stable, insane speed. When the distance got this far and energy got low, NASA estimates that each photo we take takes about 40 watts of energy away. And that is why they decided to turn it off. But let's imagine, at a distance of about 24 billion kilometers, if we turn on the Voyager camera, what will we see? Even though it's extremely far from the sun, it could see the sun as a star, but it cannot see other stars because the quality of the photos are going to be 800 by 800 pixels and it can't take photos like the Hubble or even James Webb. If you want to count the distance in terms of the universe, the Voyager is right next door. The Voyager 1 has a speed of about 17 kilometers per second. With this speed, do you know how long it will take for Voyager 1 to reach the next star? It's not that long, about 40,000 years. So the photo it's gonna take is the same photo that we see in the night sky. In terms of speed, it has a very low speed as well. It has to travel for millions of years so it can see a different space and sky that we see every night. But at that time, there is no more communication with it because the energy has ran out. But the probe does not stop. It will keep going forever and ever. But unfortunately, we can't communicate with it anymore. If someone gets a hold of it and they read what's going on on Earth and the solar system, we will not find out. We will find out if they're hovering around Earth like this, which is highly unlikely. 